War Thunder comes with a large amount of anti-aircraft vehicles. Some are puny and obscure with only rifle caliber guns, while others are beasts with 40mm auto cannons. Some perform their duties with excellence, while others should not even be in the game. Yeah, I'm looking at you R3, you Italian bastard. What they all have in common is the main task, to defend friendly ground units from air attacks and with any luck shoot down some aircraft in the process. The other role they can all fulfill is the role of tank destroyers, and that role, once again, some are really good, while on the other hand being not so good or even horrible in their main duty as anti-aircraft vehicles. In this video I'll try to give some ideas and tips on how to get the most out of these vehicles in the main role as anti-aircraft vehicles. Okay. The single best advice or tip I can give is waiting with firing at planes until they come into range where your gun and your ability to hit actually has an effect. Every single match I play, and I do really mean every single match, I see players who go crazy with their anti-aircraft vehicle as soon as they see a black speck in the sky. Whether it's an actual plane or leftover pizza from a his or her dinner on the screen, it doesn't really matter, they just start firing. Now when they do that, three things will happen. First, of course, they won't hit anything. Then they will reveal their own position. And finally, they will give away the position of any teammates close by. So please, do yourself and everybody else a favor and don't be that guy or girl. So waiting with firing at enemy planes has some pretty big advantages. You of course have a much bigger chance of hitting and downing the aircraft. And then you don't reveal your own position until the very last moment. And often at that time, the plane has no way to avoid getting hit. We all know how easy it is to spot an enemy SPAA whenever you're in a plane. All you have to do is follow the red, green or white traces to their point of origin. And that's basically it. And since most SPAA players will go absolutely ham, it's very easy for you to find the next target. So again, please don't be that guy or girl at the end from where all those traces originate. You will keep yourself alive, and you will keep your teammates who are close by you alive as well. This next tip or advice is all about crew skill, and how I choose to upgrade my crew for the anti-aircraft vehicle, which is actually very different from any other crew. What I suggest you do is that you pick a crew, and you keep using that one for anti-aircraft duty. That way, at least initially, you don't waste any points on the crew skills, because what you need to do is very specific. Now the reason I picked France is the crew was upgraded exactly like I wanted to be upgraded, and I only put points in one specific crew member who has one specific skill. So let's go to the anti-aircraft vehicle and pick crew, and then go to gunner. As, as you can see, what I've maxed out is targeting, and let's try to look at the text. The skill of gun targeting affects targeting speed and accuracy. An experienced gunner targets the gun both vertically and horizontally at once. An inexperienced one does it in turns, first he rotates the turret and then fixes the angle of fire. Now if we look down the list, we find targeting speed. And targeting speed is the exact same way of calling it turret rotation. As you can see, the base is 24.5, and right now my total is 28.7. Now if we look at the stat sheet, top line, turret rotation speed, 28.7. Same thing. And this is why I suggest that you max this skill out first, because you're getting two things out of it. First, it will increase your turret rotation speed, and then it will increase your ability to train the gun on the target itself, so it can use both axes at the same time. 
So this is the French anti-aircraft vehicle I showed, which I have maxed out the targeting. And if you use it, as you can see, if I start in the upper left corner and go down to the right, it's pretty smooth looking. There's not a whole lot of deviation where it first trains one axis and then the next. And that is the effect you're getting if you have maxed it out. The tracking is pretty smooth and it's quick for what it is, even though it's a pretty big and heavy 40mm autocannon. And for the comparison, this is the Swedish SPAA. And as you can see, if you go to the crew, it is not maxed out yet. It is at 3.5 out of 5 points. So let's try to see how the Swede does. It only has a 3.5 out of the 5 possible points initially anyhow. And as you can see, it's not nearly as smooth. You can clearly see that you can't go from top left or top right to bottom right or bottom left smoothly. It really wants to use one axis first before it continues with the next one. And try to imagine how this would look if you hadn't put any points in the targeting at all. So do yourself a favor and max out the gunner and then his targeting skill first before anything else. You usually have three or more ammo belts options with your anti-aircraft vehicle. And especially from 20mm and up, you get access to high explosive shells, where just one or two of these will be enough to bring down a plane. Unfortunately, there's a huge difference between vehicles even at the same BR when it comes to the amount of ammunition you can carry in the vehicle at one time. Let's start out by looking at this 1.3 Italian vehicle, the AS-42. If you look at it, look at the stat sheet, you can carry 1200 rounds of 20mm autocannon ammunition. And you look at the modification, access to four different kinds of belts, ranging from pure high explosive to armor-piercing incendiary treasure shells to a mix between armor-piercing incendiary treasure shells and the very effective German HVAC, the high velocity armor piercing treasure shell, which has an armor penetration of up to 64 millimeters to 10 meters. Let's compare that to Sweden, also at BR13. Look at the stat sheet, sorry. Also 20 millimeter, but that one has only access to 108 rounds of ammunition. So the Italian one has over 10 times the amount of ammo available. If you look at the modification, you have access to three belts. One of them is the high explosive fragmentation incendiary tracer shell. And then you have access to a pure armor piercing one, which has a lot less armor penetration capability than the Italian one. This one only has 42 millimeters of armor penetration compared to the Italian one with the German belt which has an armor penetration of 64 millimeters. So what's the point of all this? I'm just talking about what kind of ammo you should pick, depending on how much total ammunition you have with you. So for instance, with the Italian AS-42, you will have no issues with splitting up the ammunition, so let's say 50% high explosive and 50% armor piercing ammunition. Or you can do 70, 30, or even 20, 80 you will still never run out of ammunition. However, if you look at the Swedish one, in that case you really need to figure out beforehand what you want to do with the vehicle. Either act as an anti-aircraft vehicle or act as an anti-tank destroyer. Because you can't do both with the ammunition count you have available. So what I suggest, if you have a vehicle with a low ammo count, always go for the armor piercing ammunition. 
because you can always kill a plane with the armor piercing ammunition. It's going to take a few more shots, but you will bring down a plane. But if you only pick high explosive ammunition, there's no way you can defeat anything that has more than 3 or 5 millimeters of armor on it. So this tip is about how you place yourself on the battlefield itself. As you can see right now, I can traverse the turret 360 degrees and I can look 360 degrees and engage whatever planes out there. But that also means that they can see me. So would you rather just drive up to a building if possible, find a little shadow to hide in, and there we go. You've already reduced your chances of getting seen and hit by a lot. I would say about 40% already, because there's no way a plane can track you from this angle. Of course you won't be able to hit it either, but personally, I'd much rather just sit in the shadow for a little while and wait until the plane passes by where you can shoot it, instead of just sitting out in the open like most people do when they spawn in an anti-aircraft vehicle. If you want to stay close to the spawn area to defend, which is just fine, some people like to do that, do me a favor and at least try to move to a building or stand under a tree where you can hide in a shadow or in some bushes. So this clip kind of proves my point also. We have enemy aircraft up and we have aircraft up, so all anti-aircraft are going insane. I've got a couple of bombs on my little Japanese plane, so I pick up an easy target, and that's usually a triple A vehicle. And I pick up one up I can easily spot, and there is. Let's try stop. And if you zoom in a little, you can easily see how it can be spotted fast. He doesn't really care where he's standing, he just wants to use his anti-aircraft capability and that's fine. But he could have done several things. He could have driven left or right to hide in the tree lines or hide in the shadows or find a building nearby. But instead he chose to place himself as a black spot on a yellow background. So this is a nice example of where not to place yourself. But we live and learn or in this instance die and hopefully learn something. And I have two more examples from the same match. First a bad one, I'm scanning for a target and I find yet another anti-aircraft vehicle just sitting out and yet again he's a black spot on a yellow rice field. And I dive on him he only survives because I'm pretty piss poor at aiming apparently, otherwise he would have been dead. Easily spotted, just sitting there out in the open. Now for this clip I was doing yet another low pass over the spawning area to look for more anti-aircraft vehicles and I found that the guy shooting, but then the second guy starting to open up. Now he was much harder to spot and if he had not opened out like he did, I would not have spotted him with a dark rock background he was up against, and chances are high that he could have killed me while I was flying just above him. But of course we don't always have to use a dedicated anti-aircraft vehicle to kill a plane. So as you can see here I'm using a Japanese Honey tank destroyer, and it's just a job just as well as any anti-aircraft vehicle. Thank you for watching, I hope you got something out of the video, and until next time.